Hi everybody, this is Elan from Skin Chakra and today I have a technical presentation for you about emulsification. With this series of videos and presentations, we are going to the core and bone marrow of emulsion making so that those of you who are still struggling with emulsion stability understand the basics of emulsion making and create outstanding stable formulations and then you can jazz them up and add your active ingredients and create more complicated formulations. With an emulsion, we usually have two immiscible faces, an oil face and a water face, and a matchmaker, which is the emulsifier that helps us bring these two faces together in a meta-stable product. And we are here talking about the two basics, basic forms of emulsion, and we will not go to the complex emulsion forms or nano emulsions. We are talking about oil in water and water in oil, uh, emulsions, conventional emulsions, and in both of them, in, or in all of the emulsions, you have an outer face, which is the continuous face, and the inner face, which is the discontinuous or dispersed face, and this is uh, vice versa in oil in water and in water in an oil emulsion. We are dedicating these presentations to the oil and water emulsions, which make about 90% of the whole emulsions on the market, but some of the principles apply to the water and oil emulsions as well. As a formulator, we are aiming for stable, safe, and efficient emulsions with a pleasant skin feel. This is one of the main differences between pharmaceutical emulsions and cosmetic emulsions. And here we are talking about cosmetic emulsions and a pleasant skin feel is a pre-requirement for making emulsions. In addition to all of that, if you are making the emulsions in a commercial way and as an entrepreneur or for a commercial uh, company, your emulsions must be compliant uh, in addition to all of those requirements. Well, by having an oil face, a water face and an emulsifier, we have the basics for making an emulsion. But to create those safe, stable, efficient, and compliant emulsions, we need some additives, and these are the very, very basic additives that are needed for a stable and safe emulsion. These are stabilizers, antioxidants, preservatives, viscosity regulators, and pH regulators. When you have uh, other claims and uh, other concepts, then of course you need functional ingredients depending on the concept and the claim that you have in your formulation. Keep in mind that no matter which type of emulsion you are making, the emulsifier is the captain of the ship and it is the em emulsifier that defines the nature of the oil that you can use, the, phase, the oil phase concentration, how much oil you can use in the emulsion, the temperature range, even if it is a cold process or a hot process, the order of blending the phases and blending the ingredients, the concentration of the cold phase, the electrolyte tolerance, and the viscosity range. These are defined by your emulsifier. Either you have a certain emulsifier with certain properties and you create an emulsion that matches the requirements of the emulsifier, or you want to make a, an emulsion with certain properties and then go search for an emulsifier that can cover those properties that you want. Either concept is uh, the usual way of making an emulsion. The oil phase concentration is one of the basic requirements to take care of when you are working with any emulsifier and with any emulsion, no matter if it is oil in water or if it is water in oil. That is the emulsifier that defines which oil phase concentration you can use in the emulsion. 
Each emulsifier has a certain happy range for creating stable emulsions. And if you kick the emulsifier out of that happy range, your emulsions are doomed to separation. Some emulsifiers work better in a lower oil phase range, something between 5 to, let's say, 15. Some, most emulsifiers work best in the oil phase oil concentration range between 20 to 25 and there are some emulsifiers that work in an oil phase range between 40 to 50 percent but most of the uh, usual conventional emulsifiers are okay with the with the range between 20 to 25 this information is um, either supplied by the supplier, usually it is mentioned in the documentation of the emulsifier, or you can make your own test and vary the oil phase concentration and see which one uh, creates the most stable and the most pleasant emulsions for you. So we are now concentrating on the oil phase concentration to show you how it can affect the properties of the emulsion and we have chosen a very key formulation this for formulation only uh, contains those basic ingredients that we have mentioned in the previous slide there are no knickknacks not even a scent here these are the real basic ingredients that you need for stable emulsion so this is our basic formulation and we are going to change our oil phase between 5 to 25 percent and we will come back to you in the next videos and in next presentations and we'll compare our results and show you how changing the oil phase can change the properties of the emulsion I'm going to the details of these ingredients to show those of you who are beginners in emulsion making why we are using all of them and uh, so that you can understand the basics of emulsion making. So our basic requirements are the water or the carrier, but we are using here distilled or deionized water. Then we have the emulsifier and the oil phase. These are the three basic ingredients to make an emulsion. And as mentioned previously, we need some additives, stabilizers, antioxidants, preservatives, viscosity regulators, and pH regulators to create a safe and stable emulsion. It is not even talking about pleasant emulsion or effective emulsion. We are just talking about safe and stable and compliant emulsion. Even for the sake of simplicity, we uh, are going without any scent. We don't have any fragrance oil or essential oil here, and we kept the formulation really, really simple. We are using one chelator here with the inky name, sodium phytate aqua alcohol. This is our PA3. If you don't know exactly what chelators are and what they do in the formulations, you can scan this QR code to go back to the presentation and video about the chelators and what they do and why we are using them in the formulation. Then obviously we need a, an emulsifier and here we are using our polyacol 2W. This is a very nice emulsifier, really easy to work with when you know what it needs and its pre-requirements. It creates outstanding emulsions with a medium to high viscosity range. We are using just one plant oil and we are using marula oil here with a low iodine value and since it is a hot process emulsification, so we are using a, a plant oil with a high thermal stability and a low iodine value. It doesn't have any impact on the scent or on the color of the emulsion and it is a very nice oil with a very nice skin feel. We need an antioxidant to protect the formulation and specifically to protect the plant oil against oxidation. So we are using a tocopherol mix in our formulation. 
Then we have our blend of gums as the stabilizers and viscosity modifier. Uh, and this is a commercial blend from acacia gum and xanthan gum that we are using in the formulation. And you will see then in the procedure that we will show you in the next video that we are adding the gum into the hot emulsion after the emulsion is made. We found out that for this gum, this, this method gives us the best results. You can scan the QR code here to go back to our previous blog posts and videos that we have compared different methods of gum dispersion. And we found out that uh, in our laboratory with our instruments and with this gum, this method is the best way and gives us the best results. So we disperse the gum directly into the emulsion immediately after emulsification and this means that the emulsion is still hot and we blend this gum to the emulsion. Then we have the preservative which is a independent of the pH and we mainly use this preservative so that we do not make uh, do not play a lot with the pH this is the in the in case of simplicity but obviously you can use any other broad range preservative or preservative blends that uh, match your concepts but we are using this certain preservative this is the no cons pH 20 because its performance is independent of the pH and we don't need to play around much with the pH. We still need to measure and adjust the pH and we are using lactic acid to adjust the pH at the end, but we don't need to play a lot with the pH because we are using this preservative. So in the coming videos, we are going to show you just making one of these emulsions and then at the end, we will show you all of the formulations with different oil phase concentrations and we will show you the differences in terms of viscosity, texture, skin feel and specifically the stability when we vary the concentration of the oil phase. In the meanwhile, until the next video is uploaded, you can become a member of the Green Cosmetic Science for exclusive discounts uh, when you order uh, digital products from our shop, uh, ebooks or so, or if you want to have access to exclusive information, exclusive blog posts, or monthly video chats where you can ask your questions, you can become a member. Otherwise, I wish you a good day, a good night, depending on when you are watching this presentation. And I'll come back with our results in the next video. Thank you and bye.